Mark came forward with a, an interesting twist in the vision um, and some of the formulas for Metroid Prime 3 as compared to Metroid Prime 2. Uh, we wanted to, to a greater degree, leverage the ship um, as a playable uh, asset, for instance. And we, we had that to some degree in Prime 3, but Mark was thinking uh, uh, much more ambitiously. Uh, perhaps um, there was also an, an op open world, uh, less linear uh, uh, consideration that he uh, was proposing that the team was excited about. And uh, we, we weren't able to prototype a lot of those because those were really... Um, really big uh, we did have some some ship prototypes early but the open world one was was much bigger um but those those were ones that we would we had to do some some dancing in fact mark had printed out as one of his visual aids this origami samus ship he had taken the the um the mesh of the samus ship and used a program that uh, basically unfolded it to uh into a what what he could then turn into a paper model so he, we had this cardboard uh, uh, Samus ship that he had colored in, uh, and it looked great. It was, you know, I think we could sell it today. <laughs> but, uh, but, but he he kind of had that as a mascot during some of his uh, some of his presentations, um, and that was that was cool. I'm um, um, yeah, that that was a that was I think an area where we um, we may have fallen short of our goals with, with prime three and, and not being able to, to expand the formula a bit. Um, we're still very, very proud of prime theory. It turned, you know, it was a, a fantastic game, but uh, I would be very interested in seeing what the response was, especially the fan community to the expanded use of the ship and the, and the more open world, nonlinear experience that we were touching upon with that pitch.